Through the power of animation, you can essentially turn anything into a well-rounded and lovable character. Whether they be human, an alien, a robot, or even the subject of today's video, animals. Some of the most popular characters as of recently have been anthropomorphic animal characters, and we felt it was only right to shine a light on them. After all, whether they lean more into their anthro side or their animal side, these guys can usually put up a fight, and all while looking cute and cool. But which one is most likely to come out on top after playing a certain series of deadly children's games? I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and we're here to find out which anthropomorphic animal character would win the Squid Game. Now, as you might have guessed, we're not going to be limiting these games to only one movie or studio, as every animated studio out there has done at least one Anthro movie. However, given that animation history literally started with Anthro characters, we are going to limit our player sections to characters from the past 10 years or so. To keep things interesting, we're also only selecting one film per animated studio. Additionally, everyone goes into this game on an equal playing field. So, no weapons, gadgets, or resources. With all that being said, let's take a look at today's players. From the Kung Fu Panda series, we have Po, Tigrist, Master Shifu, Mr. Ping, Master Ugwe, Crane, Viper, Monkey, Mantis, and Lee. Moving on to Disney's Zootopia, we have Officer Judy Hopps, Nick Wilde, Chief Bongo, Benjamin Clawhauser, Miss Bellwether, and Flash the Sloth. From Illumination Sing series, we're including Buster Moon, Mina, Johnny, Rosita, Mike, Gunther, Ash, Miss Crawley, and Jimmy Crystal. Finally, we have our most recent anthro characters from DreamWorks The Bad Guys. Mr. Wolf, Mr. Snake, Mr. Shark, Mr. Piranha, Miss Tarantula, Diane Foxington, and Professor Marmalade. That gives us a total of 32 anthro characters. Now that we've got our players selected, let the furry squid game begin. As always, we'll start with our first game, Red Light Green Light. Red Light Green Light is a game that's all about speed and sharp listening skills. The goal is to make it to the finish line as fast as you can. However, if a player is too focused on the finish line to realize when a red light is coming up, or if they easily panic and accidentally move or stumble when they're supposed to phrase, this game could spell their doom. Right off the bat, we feel like our kung fu masters all ace this challenge. Being trained warriors, they're not only speedy, but are also great at listening to instructions and likely very observant. Even Master Ugwe, despite his age and occasional slowness, would still have the ability to pass this game, given that there's often much more to this old turtle than meets the eye. Judy Hopps is also a big winner in this game. In her movie, we see just how great she is at hearing even at a distance, thanks to those big old ears of hers. She's also incredibly fast and agile. Though her determination can sometimes blind her, we feel that she would be on her toes enough to not do anything stupid. Given how long she was able to run with the innocent sheep act as she enacted her devious plans, Bellwether is definitely patient enough to pass this game, unlikely to make any risky moves and being a good enough listener to avoid being shot at. Our bad guys characters also do well in this game, with the fast thinking and quick footed Diane and the speedy Piranha being the front runners. Admittedly, we were a bit on the fence about Piranha given how over eager he can be, which could definitely spell doom in this game. In the end, however, we saw his speed and his overall fearlessness as more of an asset than a detriment, being enough to get him across the finish line. One character that isn't so lucky though is the quirky Miss Crawley. Being elderly and not having a kung fu background like Ugwe, Crawley was at a huge disadvantage in this game. She can be slow, clumsy, and easily startled. She didn't really have much of a chance. You're two hours late for rehearsal! Another character that unfortunately falls in this game is Mina. As much as we love Mina, we just couldn't see her passing this game. Of all the Sing characters, she's the one who gets startled most easily. Whenever she's nervous or scared, she either freezes in fear or becomes pretty clumsy, making for a deadly combination. While cheetahs are known for being fast, Officer Clawhauser doesn't really fall into that category. 
What's more, we have no idea what he's like out in the field or how many skills he has outside of his receptionist and dispatch duties. Speaking of which, he doesn't seem to be the best listener given how long it took him to answer Judy's call for backup. For all these reasons, his death in this game seemed pretty likely. Here you went, you little dickens! Oh. Next to die is Mike. Yeah, this isn't a good round for the Sing characters. For as much as Mike may talk a big talk, he's often pretty cowardly. We see him being someone more likely to try running back towards the exits once the bullets start flying. And the final character to die in red light, green light is Flash the Sloth. Unfortunately, this guy will likely only make it a few feet before the clock runs out. With 27 of our players surviving, it's time for our next game, Papagi, or Honeycomb. The Honeycomb game requires patience and a steady hand. Too much shaking or pressure could cause a fatal break. As such, our contestants will need to have enough focus to poke out their shape without accidentally breaking it. Being a master pickpocket and a master thief respectively, both Mr. Wolf and Diane have no problems with this game at all. They would easily be skilled enough with their hands as well as patient enough to get the cookie out with ease. Looking at our smallest competitors, both Miss Tarantula and Mantis would have an easy time with this game. Because they're so small, they would have an easier time than most with the cookie, being able to see all the small details while watching out for potential breaks. Though Tigress is incredibly strong, we saw in her segment within the Secrets of the Furious 5 special that she was able to learn how to control her mighty strength, becoming careful and much more skilled with her paws. But who said only those with paws can pass this game? Because he is a chef and is likely used to cutting things carefully and working with food that could classify as fragile, and you'll sell noodles to all of them? We thought that Mr. Ping would be able to pass this game despite having wings instead of hands. However, the thing about this game is, well, you still need hands of sorts. Which is why we had to unfortunately eliminate Mr. Snake. And on that note, we also have to see Viper eliminated. Snake may be a Houdini without arms, while Viper may be a martial arts master, but it would still be practically impossible for them to hold both the cookie and the needle at the same time without dropping either of them. And even if they could somehow manage it, they still probably wouldn't have the speed needed to get the cookie out in time. Apologies to our two favorite reptiles. Sorry, Poe, it's just me. Another character we hate to see go is Johnny. As we saw in Sing 2, this gorilla doesn't always have the steadiest hands when he's nervous or freaking out. His giant hands and gorilla strength also don't really help matters. Similarly, Chief Bongo also seems like he would struggle with this game. Bongo is a huge guy being a water buffalo and all, and with how impatient he can be, we couldn't really see him getting out of this game without a break, leading to him becoming our final death of this game. Animals don't go, Savage. Looking at our remaining contestants, we're left with 23 players still standing. Following the Honeycomb game, we of course have the Midnight Brawl. Lack of food and sleep plus the stress of staying alive can drive any person to the point of violence. And in these games, it's every player for themselves. To survive this game, a person must be either strong enough to fight or clever and sneaky enough to hide. So, who would be able to either fend off attackers or properly hide themselves until the brawl was over? With this game, we could honestly go on and on when it comes to who passes this game with flying colors. With today's group of contestants being filled with criminals, both former and current, Kung Fu masters and police officers, many of them would either be able to fight or have no problems hiding themselves away. Such as Buster, who's known for hiding in drawers and suitcases, and Bellwether, who's good at working from the shadows. There are, however, still a couple characters that fail to do either. Though they may have a lot of piggy power, both Rosita and Gunther end up falling in this game. 
While Rosita is pretty smart, and both she and Gunther are lighter on their feet than you might expect, neither are particularly strong or stealthy. They aren't fighters whatsoever, and when it comes to running and hiding, we'd say they're pretty average. Unfortunately in these games, average just isn't enough sometimes. We also had to sadly eliminate Mr. Ping during this round. While he may have done just fine in the previous game, we just didn't think he had enough skill to get him through this deadly battle. We do see him fight in the third movie, but he still had to use a frying pan while needing assistance from Lee to stand a chance. Like we said before, weapons aren't allowed in these games, so Mr. Ping doesn't have much to defend himself with. Our final player to fall is yet another Sing character, Ash. While her porcupine quills can make for a good defense, they aren't exactly a battle strategy that can be depended on, especially in the case of sneak attacks. I am not singing this. Furthermore, she's one of the youngest characters left in the game, which also puts her at a disadvantage. With several more contestants permanently down for the count and 19 players left standing, it's time for another strength-based game, Tug of War. Unlike the actual Squid Game, we aren't going to assign characters to specific teams. Instead, we're simply going to judge them based on their abilities and likelihood to survive. To win Tug of War, you don't just need strength. You also need strategy and a willingness to work with others. Even weaker players have a shot at surviving if they can coordinate properly with stronger players. This is another game where several characters are able to stand out. As a master and teacher, Shifu can give great instructions and lead any team to victory, despite his smaller size. This battle is between you and me. The same can go for Buster Moon, who has pulled off some pretty amazing feats with his theater troupe by his side. Even Bellwether, despite being a small and pretty weak sheep, was able to do a good job coordinating her rams to attack the predators of Zootopia. Other characters who may not be the best at leading still have the strength to pull off a win. So who are the ones struggling during this game? Well, one such character is Mantis. Now we all know what you're going to say. Yes, he was able to hold up the bridge, Tai Long, and the rest of the Furious Five in the first film. However, this was still a bit of a struggle for him. Plus, there's a difference between holding on to something and actually being able to pull someone forward. Similarly, Miss Tarantula would also likely have trouble in this game. Though she is part of a gang, much of her work is done solo, just her and her keyboards, so she wouldn't be much of a leader. Her size and her somewhat noodly arms would also be a huge detriment. Sticking with the shorter characters, the next to take the long plunge is Mr. Piranha. While he may be the muscle of the team, playing tug of war wouldn't be nearly as easy for him as quickly beating up a bunch of opponents at once. Additionally, unlike Buster, who at the very least has leadership on his side, Piranha isn't much of a leader and can sometimes be a bit dumb. Another bad guy's character whose time in the Squid Game ends here is Professor Marmalade. Now you may be thinking this is only due to his size and lack of physical strength, and while that does play a big part in this decision, it isn't the only reason. I might just have an idea. While Marmalade may be a pretty intelligent character, being a master manipulator and all, he's not exactly a team player. If he wasn't the one in charge of his team, there's a good chance that he would rebel out of anger, given how easily it is for him to get frustrated, leading to his doom. Simply put, the guy's a backstabber, and backstabbers really don't make it far in these team challenges. Crane also seems like someone that would struggle in this game. Going back to the bridge scene, it shows that he would at the very least probably last for a good while in this run before eventually falling. After all, feathery and likely slippery hands could only go so far when it comes to keeping a grip on something. This last one may be a real heartbreaker, but Judy Hopps also falls in this game. Much like Piranha, while she was able to learn how to use her small size to her advantage in a fight, we still feel that she would struggle a ton when put up against a team of people or animals much bigger than her. Blood, blood, blood! 
dead. After a very deadly round, we have just 13 contestants left. Up next, we have the Marble Game. Marbles is an interesting one, at least in the context of Squid Game. There are multiple ways for pairs of players to play their marble game. They could focus on accuracy or how far they can roll their marble, or they could simply guess how many marbles are in their opponent's hand. As such, there are multiple ways to win, with most of these ways relying on either skill or luck. Of course, if you don't have the skills to win, there's always manipulation. Not to lean into stereotypes, but Nick Wilde, Mr. Wolf, and Diane all have the wits and charm needed to pretty much manipulate whoever they needed to. They all also have pretty cool heads, allowing them to play the game without the risk of being shot at for breaking the rules. Monkey can be a bit of a trickster at times, as shown in his Secrets of the Furious 5 short. And when it comes to the actual game of marbles, his species also gives him some extremely useful opposable thumbs. Buster Moon can be a liar extraordinaire, as well as incredibly determined. And while this may not give him many points on the morality scale, it does help him out quite a bit in this game. Mm, I don't suppose any of you can tap dance, huh? Of course, when it comes to manipulators, you can't forget the sneaky sheep Bellwether. Though more of a long-term planner than an outright schemer, we still feel like she'd be able to outwit others in this route. Moving on to this game's deaths, we have Master Uguay. With how accepting Uguay is when it comes to his own morality, we just couldn't see him being willing to actively kill someone. He very much plays the role of Owil Nam in this game, sacrificing himself for another player, just without the extra twist at the end. Focusing on the game itself, we think that Tigress would be another Kung Fu Panda character to fall in this game. While she can be skilled with her paws, she's a very straightforward character, not being too much of a manipulator. If she were put up against someone who was focused on tricking her, this could lead to her being at a detriment. This is what you trained me for. The next character to fall in this game would unfortunately be Mr. Shark. Given that he has fins instead of hands or paws, there's already a bit of struggle there. Though he can be incredibly crafty through his disguises, Shark can often be so over the top that it could be easy for someone to tell when he's playing a con. There's also his temper, which could also potentially lead him to losing the game by default if he were to attack another player out of anger. Speaking of anger, we definitely feel like Jimmy Crystal wouldn't last long in this game. It doesn't take long for him to retaliate once he's been offended. And while he is a businessman, he can sometimes be pretty dumb. Yeah, you got that right, Linda. After all, he took Buster at his word when Buster promised him Clay Calloway and only looked into it after he allowed the koala to be put on his show. Going back to Kung Fu Panda, we had to eliminate Lee. While Poe can be sneaky and good at strategizing at times, Lee isn't nearly as crafty. Outside of his lie to Poe, he's also a fairly honest character, and we just couldn't see him being as manipulative as the other characters. For our final death of the game, we had to sadly eliminate Master Shifu. Now Shifu can be a real strategist at times. We saw this during his dumpling fight with Poe in the first movie. However, much like Tigress, Shifu can also be very straightforward as well as easily frustrated when things don't go his way. Would you hit it? It can also sometimes take him a bit to realize something given his occasional stubbornness, especially when things go wrong. Though it was a close call, this master just couldn't cut it in the end. We're now a officially down to our final seven. And just in time for one of this competition's deadliest games, Glass Stepping Stones. This game is another tricky one for a hypothetical scenario, as much of this game relies on luck. There is one strategy to it, however, that being the advantage of going last, after some glass pieces have already been broken. As such, those who have a big enough ego to want to try a game first will likely seal their doom. One of the cockiest characters like left in the game is Mr. Wolf. Though not a huge egotist, the guy seems to have the belief that he can get out of anything, which could lead to him forgetting to be cautious. Sorry, Mr. Wolf. Do what you need to do, pal. Another egotistical character is Bellwether. 
we could easily see her pushing others out of the way to try and get ahead of a situation, not knowing just how dangerous the game truly was. It's too bad as she definitely seems like the type that would push whoever's ahead of her, but with Bellwether likely being second or third in line, she wouldn't really get the chance. Moving on, the next to fall in the games is the Kung Fu Panda himself, Poe. Unlike our first two deaths, which were caused by ego, this one is caused by eagerness. No matter the danger, Poe is often running head first into things. This would ultimately be his downfall. How did I ever fit in this tiny basket? Making things worse is that while he learned to be lighter on his feet, Poe is still a heavy panda with short legs, meaning that he probably wouldn't be fast enough to save himself if he were to step on a breakable glass panel. The last two to die in this round aren't quite as cocky as our first few contestants, but are still fairly confident in themselves, these deaths being Buster and Nick. Judging by how confident they can be, we could see them picking a number somewhere in the middle. Because of this, they'd be able to make it pretty far, but ultimately not far enough. Their smaller size doesn't help matters, and neither of them have any extraordinary skills that could save them, nor are they ruthless enough to try pushing other players. Again, it's a case of being average, just not being enough. So our final two anthro characters remaining are Monkey and Diane, and we're sure you can guess why. Though fairly confident in their abilities, we couldn't see either one of these characters rushing to the head of the pack either because of their own egos or because they were too confident. Their agility also gives these two a huge boost. Even if they were to pick a middle to high number, they're so fast on their feet that there's a pretty good chance they'd be able to jump to another panel just before falling. Uh. He's too fast! Just like in the show, our final challenge will be a one-on-one -on -one duel in the titular Squid Game. In this game, two opponents must go up against one another, with one acting as defender and the other as an attacker, with the attacker doing everything they can to reach the top of the court or the squid's head and touch it with their foot, with the defender doing whatever they can to stop them. Or at least that's how Squid Game is traditionally played. Here though, it's more of a battle to the death type of deal. If we're being honest, this is one of the closest calls we've ever had in our Squid Game series, with both of these characters being master fighters. Starting out with Monkey, he's been described as an unpredictable prankster who is fierce as he is clever and funny, whose distinctive style of kung fu and unpredictable moves always keeps his attackers guessing. He's cunning, shown to be more street smart than the rest of the Furious Five, and even has an extra limb to help him out, that being his tail. As for Diane, she can be quick, cunning, and a force to be reckoned with. As the Crimson Paw, she remained undefeated, always escaping and outwitting the police. While that can't really apply to a one-on-one -on -one battle, we also saw how great of a fighter she was during the prison break scene, being able to take on multiple opponents at once without breaking a sweat. In terms of combat prowess and strength, these two are pretty much equally matched. We feel like Diane is slightly faster while while Monkey could be seen as more versatile. Because there are no weapons allowed in this final fight, it really is hard to say who would come out on top in this final showdown. In the end though, the one who falls in this final round is the thief turned governor, Diane. It was an incredibly close call that could have gone either way, as Diane is certainly no slouch in a fight. But given that Monkey was not only trained by a kung fu master and therefore being much harder to defeat than a police officer, but also has a bit of unpredictability to him, we determined that he would be the most likely to get the win. So congratulations Monkey, our anthro character Squid Game Champion. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our results. And and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.